Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Ultima 6, The False Prophet. In our last episode, the Avatar and his companions started a treasure hunt. And that's what we're going to do today, so let's get started. As you may remember, we're here in the town of Buccaneer's Den, where this gentleman up here at the top, Homer, uh, told us about the eight pieces of Captain Hawkins' treasure. Um, sorry, the eight pieces of Captain Hawkins' treasure map. That treasure map will lead to the uh, resting place of the silver tablet that we have been looking for for quite a long time. Hopefully we will now uh, be able to maybe get our hands on it. Now he told us that there were four pieces that he knew of. I'm sorry, five pieces that he knew of. The first one was um, a crew member named Hawknose, who had gone to the drylands to kill a daemon. The second was Sandy, the ship's cook, who had gone to Trinzik. Uh, with the first mate. The third was a man named Ibarra, who went to the dungeon Shame. The fourth died in a shipwreck, and the fifth was in Jelam, and had a hook for a hand. Well, as we said last time, I think we remember the uh, beggar with a hook for a hand in the town of Jelam, so that's a good place to start. Let's go ahead and sail to the town of Jelam, and we'll see if we can uh, find it. Uh, see if we can find this gentleman and, and ask him if he knows anything about that map. Now, as you may remember, uh, if you have a copy of the Ultima 6 map yourself or want to look uh, for an, one online using Google, uh, the town of Jalam is located at 60 degrees south, 20 degrees west of Lord British's castle. And we're going to go ahead and make our way that way. We have uh, quite a way south to go, but even more uh, farther west. We're basically going to have to sail all the way around the Britannian continent um, around the southern tip, near where Serpent's Hold was, where we were before, in the previous episode. Now, normally I would have gone ahead and used the Orb of the Moon to just travel to Jelam. The only problem is, um, our ship was located at Buccaneer's Den, and Buccaneer's Den does not have a moon gate. So, unfortunately, we, we could leave Buccaneer's Den, go to the town of Jelam, and we'd have no way to easily get back to the island. We'd have to buy another ship to get there. Now, there is technically one other way to get uh, back to Buccaneer's Den without a ship, um, and I'll probably show that in a future episode, but for now, we're going to pretend like there's no other way back. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is probably the large island that uh, the Keep of Serpent's Hold is on. Unless I'm mistaken. So if we continue sailing uh, around it to the south and to the west, we should get where we're going. We are at 65 south, 13 east now. Oh, and actually, we're a little farther north than I thought we were. This is actually the island um, chain just to the west of the continent. We'll have to sail a little further east to go around all of this. Oops. Uh-oh, it looks like a uh, we've just come across a shipwreck, which is uh, has a lot of ghosts and skeletons on, uh, around it. Now, we could use our um, ship's cannons to destroy these monsters, but we wouldn't get any experience for doing that. So let's go ahead and disembark. And we'll go ahead and get into battle here. We need to go ahead and re-equip the halberd that uh, the avatar was wielding.
Unfortunately, in the world of Britannia, ghosts uh, seem to be corporeal. Uh, they can be, they can attack you, and they can be attacked. And apparently, skeletons are able to uh, wield bows and arrows. Whoever was on board this ship uh, obviously did not go into a peaceful uh, rest when their ship was lost. Alright, I think that's all of them. Let's go ahead and get the party out of the way, and we'll go ahead and search the uh, bones and see if there's anything worth uh, collecting here. A spear, 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 a spear. Throwing axes! <laughs> a bow, 14 arrows, a wooden shield, and 48 gold coins. I just want to make sure that there's no bodies under these bodies before I search them. Once again, we're running into that oft-lamented uh, inability of the Ultima 6 engine to uh, stack certain items. It just says, a spear, a spear, a spear, a spear, a spear, a spear, and so on. We'll go ahead and have Yolo uh, pick up those arrows. And Dupre will uh, begin picking up some of these extra weapons and armor because we can sell these later. We'll go ahead and grab some of these throwing axes, uh, at least as many, at least as many as we can carry, because we should be able to sell these. And make some money off of this uh, situation. We'll go ahead and also grab these spears and see, uh, you know, if we can sell those as well. Alright, that should be enough. Let's see if anything is in this ship that we can discover. Searching here, you find part of a map. Well, as you we, as we remember, Homer told us that one of the pirates had died in a shipwreck. Looks like we've just stumbled across that piece of the treasure map. Let's go ahead and grab that. What a fortuitous uh, circumstance that we happened upon this. That's one piece of the map down and only seven to go. Or sorry, nine to go technically if we include Homer's piece that he said he would give to us once uh, he would tell us where it was once we uh, gave him the other eight. All right, let's continue, continue sailing west to the town of uh, Jalam and look for our second piece of the map. Looks like our adventure is off to a good start here. Now we need to go to about 20 degrees west to get to the town of Jalam. We're at 10 west, so we're almost there. We're making good time here. Ah, there's some shallower water. Let's head up here. Those are the southern docks of the town of Jalam. All right, so we need to find um, the member of his crew who had a hook for a hand. And if I remember correctly, he was near the uh, the tavern at the northern end of the town. Heftimus, you see a beggar clad in the rags of a sailor with a hook for a right hand. Spare a doubloon for an old sea hand, he holds out his hand. Sure, we'll go ahead and give him one. Thank you kindly, matey. So, Mr. Heptimus, how about that map? That bit of news will cost you 20 coins. What say you, matey? Aye or nay? Well, we've come so far, let's go ahead and pay for this map. We, we really want to get this at this point. I thank you kindly, matey. The last I saw that bit of parchment. I needed to start a fire in a dungeon. Uh-oh. But before I could apply sparks to the tinder... 
A huge swarm of rats drove me away. The scrapper map lies in the dungeon wrong, matey. So you were in a dungeon. I've been into the dungeon wrong. There's a cave on this island that looks a lot safer. Is there? I sleep in front of it every night. Soon as I've saved up a stake, I'm going in there to dig for gold. Okay, so it looks like there might be a gold mine on this island if we're uh, short on cash. Um, but you were specifically looking for the dungeon wrong. It was certainly the wrong place for an old sea dog to be. He laughs, chokes, and coughs for a while. I'll be all right, matey. Okay, so he no longer has his map piece, and it's somewhere deep in the dungeon wrong. <laughs> One of the uh, eight great dungeons of Britannia, the pits of all evil, the uh, birthplace of monsters. Good journey. Eh, we'll try our best. Okay, well, that's a bit of a snag. We're going to have to go into the dungeon wrong to find that map piece. That's two dungeons now. Uh, Homer also told us that another one of the uh, crew members went into the dungeon shame. So we're going to have to go into the dungeon wrong and the dungeon shame before this quest is over. All right, well, let's keep looking and see... Um, let's head for Trinsic, because if we remember correctly, the uh, they said that Sandy, the ship's cook, went to Trinsic and uh, was there with the first mate. And actually, we can get there a lot faster if we go ahead and use the uh, Orb of the Moons this time. Because we can always come back to Jellam using the same orb and pick, and pick our ship back up. And if you remember... Oops, gotta move out of the way here. If you remember, the Orb of the Moons, two paces to the south, takes us to the town of Trinsic. We're gonna have to hurry because it looks like it's almost sundown. I'm hoping that the um, the gentleman who sells uh, arms and armor has not gone to bed yet, because if we could sell all these uh, throwing axes and other assorted items, uh, if we could go ahead and sell them, well, that would make uh, give us a little bit extra gold here on our hands. Ah, and unfortunately, he's gone to sleep. No matter, we'll go ahead and talk to the ship's cook first, uh, see if we can find this gentleman. And if you remember, we previously met Sandy the last time we were here in this town. Of course, at that time, we had no idea that he was a former pirate. <laughs> you see a shifty-eyed man with a strange smile. He smells of rancid grease and cooking smoke. Hello there, my lord. So, Sandy, tell us about the map. Hmm, I'd better get back to cooking, excuse me. He mumbles away, mumbling. Sorry, he walks away, mumbling. Magincian pastry. What if I ask him about being a pirate? He doesn't seem to want to talk about it. Let's, let's though talk about this pastry. I could do you a favor if you did one for me first. A favor? Let's see. A golden orb on a crystal sea, and a box sans hinges, lid or key. I'll give you one guess to this riddle. Well, that's a pretty classic riddle, and of course anybody who's ever read The Hobbit knows the answer to that riddle, slightly in a slightly different form, is an egg. Very good. To make Magician pastry, I require one dragon's egg. Only a dragon's will do. There's a lair in the dungeon Destard to the northwest. It's not far. Ah, <sighs> so if this guy's gonna help us, we're gonna go have going to have to go into the dungeon Destard and fight dragons. I don't think our party is quite ready for that sort of an adventure. Bye. That's now three uh, pirates, uh, former pirates, who want us to venture into dungeons, <laughs> or three pieces of the map that need us to go into dungeons. So far, we're not having a whole lot of luck on this quest. We found one piece so far. Now, although, um... Sorry. We now know that Sandy's piece, um, we have to go to the dungeon Destard to get. Ibarra's piece, we haven't met Ibarra yet, but we know that that's in the dungeon Shame. Heftimus's piece, we're going to have to go into the dungeon Jellam. The fourth piece that Homer told us about was about a shipwreck. We found that one. The fifth that we know about so far was Hawknose, who went to the Drylands to kill a daemon. 
Well, if you look at our map, uh, we know that the dry lands are in the northeast of Britannia, um, to the north of Moonglow. So we'll head over there in a bit. But what Homer didn't tell us about, what he didn't remember, was we met a lady who talked to us about a um, a piece of a treasure map that she had lost. If you remember, that lady lived outside of Empath Abbey. So let's head over there, and we'll go ahead and check that out real quick and see if maybe that's the same map that we're looking for. First, of course, we need to head out of town and uh, go ahead and rest for the night really quick. Let's get a little bit farther away from these buildings. Oh, we need to make a little more room here. Okay, it looks like daytime is uh, starting again. Now, if, if you remember correctly, if you remember, Empath Abbey is to the, um, about due west and a little bit to the south of the town of Yu. Town of Yu, if we were going to use the Orb of the Moons, is two spaces to the east of the Avatar. All right, so we're going to head west out of town, follow the road, and head due west, uh, following the path until it takes us to Empath Abbey again. Here we go. We're entering the uh, area here of the Abbey. And if you remember, heading up and around uh, from that previous episode, if we head up and around, the uh, lady, and I don't remember her name off the top of my head, um, who used to own that locket uh, that was stolen with a map piece in it, um, lives up here. We'll go ahead and refresh that conversation um, in case, uh, you know, just for memory's sake. Now, she's sleeping, and we could wait a few minutes until she wakes up, but you can also, um, when somebody's sleeping in Ultima 6 and you want to wake them up, you can basically just cast Dispel Magic on them. Just as if they were poisoned, and it'll wake them up. Silena. Now, uh, we were talking to her about her husband, if I remember correctly. About the locket that he gave her. My husband left me a gold locket. It contained a piece of an old ship's chart. He said that chart would make me rich. I didn't really care about the chart, but the locket. That locket was all I had to remember Nathaniel by. She sighs and looks away for a moment. <clears throat> Though he was not a bad husband, I'll always remember him as something of a scoundrel. She smiles, and her lovely eyes sparkle with memories. So in other words, this pirate, when he settled down, he married this lady, and he was still a bit of a scoundrel. They say he went down in a storm. He was a pirate. My husband left me a gold locket wrapped in a piece of an old ship's chart. Maybe that's what you seek. I don't have the locket or the map anymore. The gypsies came by one day and stole them. Yes, some gypsies are trustworthy, but others are scoundrels. Well, we've met two bands of gypsies, as you remember. Um, there was Zoltan, the king of the gypsies, who was, seemed very trustworthy. He, he seemed a very nice fellow. And then there was that other band just north of Trinzic um, that weren't quite as trustworthy. And I have to wonder if maybe those guys would know where that pirate map is. So once again, let's quickly head down to Trinzic. Alright, we're 
we'll head back into town here. And while we're here, let's quickly talk to the uh, blacksmith. Now, if you remember, Dupre bought a couple uh, of swords, or rather, he recovered a couple of swords from that battle. So we'll go ahead and sell those. And I believe the Iron Helm and Plate Mail are his. Let's just take a look at Dupre's uh, items here. There we go. Okay, let's uh, see if he's willing to buy any of Shamino's items. No, just the main gosh sword and plate mail, which I believe are his uh, his own items. <laughs> All right, let's try and see if he's willing to buy anything from Leona and Leoden. Actually, Leona and Leoden aren't holding extra items at all, so... They're just holding their own items at this point. Alright, so we got a little bit of money from selling those two extra swords. Uh, if we want to sell those throwing axes or spears, we're going to have to go to somebody else. Okay, but in the meantime, let's head just north out of town, and we'll go see if we can uh, meet those gypsies. Ah, and there they are. There's a colorfully clad, bemused looking gypsy. Hey, Paisan, if you were looking to get your fortune told, you came to the right place. Now we're looking for a locket. Or a map? Map! Hmm, map. Oh yeah, that uh, old thing. Sure, I got that, but she's uh, not very interesting. Say, do you want to buy it? Sure. Oh, well, sure you do. She's a very important map. He leads you away from the rest of the group. Don't want no spioneers, huh? Yeah, this map, uh, she's a leading into the treasure of, uh, who was it? Yellowbeard or somebody. Well, I forget, but the point is it leads to a big, huge treasure. So if you want this map, you're going to have to pay 100 gold, okay? No. Well, I hate to see anybody pass up good fortune, so I tell you what I do. I'll sell you this map, this key to infinite wealth, for just 75 gold, okay? No. What? Are you nuts? But okay, how's about just 50 gold? We'll sell for it. We'll buy for 50. Okay, here's the map. And may fortune to bring you lots of gold. Hey, you come again soon, okay? So now we have two pieces of this map. Let's go ahead and move them into a, uh, into a quest bag here. Actually, we're short on bags. We'll go ahead and see if there's an extra bag somebody has. Uh... We may buy an extra bag in a, in a little bit. Uh... Shamino, ha Shamino has one he's not using. This will mean that these uh, won't—they won't take up uh, the avatar's uh, main screen of his inventory, so it's a little easier to see where the sextant is when we need to access it quickly, and these other bags with the reagents and stuff. All right, so we have got two of the map pieces. Um, the third one. Now, the third one that we could theoretically get without having to go into a dungeon is in those dry lands. Uh, the guy went to the dry lands to kill a daemon. Well, to get to the dry lands, we're going to have to either walk there all the way across the uh, whole length of Britannia, or we can go back to the uh, town of Jelam and get our ship. Now the town of Jelam is two spaces up and two spaces to the east. And let's go ahead and head back down to the south end of town to get on board our ship. There we go. Now we're going to have to sail quite a ways now this time. Uh, we're going to have to sail all the way east around the uh, southern edge of the Britannian continent once again and then due north past the town of Moonglow. We're looking for somewhere around, I'd say, 60 degrees uh, east at least.
and somewhere around 15 degrees to the north. But before we can go north, we're going to have to head a little bit further south and go around the continent. Now, fortunately, unlike in the previous, um, in Ultima 5, um, in Ultima 5, if you were sailing your ship and you ran into the ground because um, you were bumping into it like this, uh, your ship would actually take damage and you'd have to stop and repair it. Um, this game doesn't have where you're just simply sailing with the wind, like in Ultima 5, where you could only move if the uh, wind was spilling in the correct direction. This one, you simply use the arrow keys and move the ship uh, regardless of the direction of the wind. Uh, wind directions come in um, to play later in the game with a different vehicle that we'll be getting. Okay, we're getting there. We have about 20 more degrees uh, to head to the east. Apparently there's all kinds of uh, battles going on on this island. We'll go ahead and avoid it for now. And in fact, more than likely, uh, if if, uh, if I'm looking at the ultimate, if I'm looking at my map correctly here, yeah, we're still quite a ways away from uh, where we need to be. Let's not get into any misadventures here. We still have a little bit of ways to go before we're um, even with Lord British's castle on the north-south axis. It's about this point in the game where you start to envy uh, some of the Japanese role-playing games like Final Fantasy where you eventually get an airship that can traverse the entire length of a continent in about a minute or so. The Orb of the Moon certainly helps, but not every place is accessible by the Orb. Okay, we've reached the uh, southern tip of that, um, of the uh, section of the continent that leads to the desert, to the dry land, so we're almost where we need to be. Maybe just a little bit further to the east here. Now, those of you who remember, um... Excuse me. Those of you who re who um, remember Ultima Five um, will remember that somebody lived in the Drylands um, that we met there, uh, who was a Daemon. Um, Homer said that one of the crew members, um, Hawknose, went to the Drylands to try to kill this Daemon that lived there. Now, like I said, if you've played Ultima V, you should know who that daemon is. Uh, we met the daemon in the Drylands, living in a hut there, whose name was Sin Vral. Um, in that game, he used to serve the Shadow Lord of Hatred until Lord British um, was captured by the Shadow Lord, and then somehow Lord British converted this daemon away from the cause of evil um, to the cause of good. I think we've overshot where we're heading for a little bit, so let's head a little bit further back to the south. Um, and this daemon actually gave us some assistance in our quest to defeat the Shadow Lords and to rescue Lord British. Um, if it's the same daemon, um, well, maybe he'll be willing to help us again. We'll have to see.
Okay, we're just about at the edge of the desert here. Let's go ahead and get out of our ship. And we'll remember that our ship is located at about 14 degrees north and 66 degrees east, so we don't lose it if, when we have to come find it again. And there, oh, there's the drylands. And there's a giant scorpion. Let's get into battle. Well, fortunately, it looks like giant scorpions aren't all that durable. Oh, looks like we're still in battle here. Something else is attacking us. Another giant scorpion. It looks like Leona was poisoned. And she's been cured. And it looks like night is falling. Let's go ahead and withdraw a little bit of distance away. And we're going to go ahead and uh, quickly rest. So we can see what we're doing. If there's going to be uh, giant scorpions wandering around, we do not want to be... unable to see very far around us. <laughs> One of them could wander up on us very quickly and uh, before we know it, poison the whole party. And that was an accident. I did not mean to rest the second time there uh, without setting a guard, and I was very lucky that nothing came upon us. Okay, so this is the Drylands. It's a massive desert um, in the northeast part of the Britannian continent. Now let's see a gargoyle. Well, Damon certainly do look like gargoyles, but this is where Sinvral used to live, so let's talk to him. You see the Damon, Sinvral. Good morning, my lord. What seek you? I am Sinvral. No job, my lord. I am free to wander where I wish. Free. Among my people, those who fly... Those who can fly, rule. Though I have wings, I cannot fly, so I was a slave. Here I am free. Among your people. I am not a daemon, though humans think so. I am a gargoyle. Well, that's a, a bit of a surprise. I mean, we knew him as a daemon in the previous game, but it looks like he was a gargoyle all along. So you, you can't fly. There are two kinds of gargoyles, winged ones and wingless ones. Wingless ones are mute and unintelligent. They do all the manual labor. Winged ones are smart and do all the planning and leading. Being able to fly is, to them, a sign of intelligence. Even the temple can only be reached by air intelligence. Yes, a strange concept, this. Yet, as, in, as some in my knock can tell you, flying can be achieved by anyone. We haven't been to Minoc yet in this uh, game. Uh, that's the town of Sacrifice. Apparently, if we go there, <laughs> they know something about flying. Uh, tell, tell us more about this temple. The great temple of singularity held the codex. The Codex? The Codex of Ultimate Wisdom that I recovered in Ultima 4? The temple is the most holy gargoyle place. A human could learn much by traveling there. But you could never get to the temple. Not only is it deep below the surface, but it can only be reached by flying. And you cannot fly any more than I can. Well, unless we go to the town of Minoc, apparently. That's interesting. So the Temple of Singularity, the holiest place for gargoyles, apparently held the Codex of Ultimate Wisdom. Was that before we got it? Strange. So you said you're a gargoyle. I fled here to the underworld because I was not free among the gargoyles. Well, that gives us a little bit more of an interesting uh, idea about his backstory. I, I, we never realized that. Of course, we never knew about the gargoyles in the previous game. Um... 
Do you know anything about Lord British? Do you remember helping us to get him back? I know nothing of British, my lord. <laughs> so we know his name is Sinvral. What is your job, Sinvral? No job, my lord. I am free to wander where I wish. Okay, so let's go ahead and ask him if he knows anything about this map piece. Okay, well, do you know, do you know anything about Hawknose? What about the pirate? Yes, I once met a pirate here in the desert. He seemed to be hunting me, but he got dragged off by the ants. The ants. The great desert ants build huge mounds and are very dangerous. Wow. So he got dragged off by the ants. May your persistence and precision lead to success, my lord. That's... Okay, so apparently he got dragged off by the ants. It looks like there's not just giant um, scorpions, but also giant ants around here. For anyone who's got a problem with insects, this is not a fun place to be. <laughs> so let's look around a bit here. Let's see if we can find any giant ants. There are gargoyles nearby, and they're fighting. Well, if you look at your map, uh, your Ultima 6 map, you'll notice that there is a shrine in the middle of the desert. And I believe it is the Shrine of Humility. And look, the gargoyles are currently in a battle with giant ants. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Actually, you know what? We're in trouble. If we, we need to go ahead and get in this fight. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and just get massacred here. In fact, Sherry is already dead. That gargoyle's fleeing. Uh-oh. There's another gargoyle somewhere up to the north. Okay, that one's been killed as well. Let's go ahead and get out of here while we still can. But before we do, there's one thing we have to do really quickly. Leona. Actually, let's get the whole party out of the way here. Leodon will do this. Go ahead and grab Sherry. So we can go ahead and get her resurrected somewhere. Now, as we flee from, uh, from, this, from the uh, overwhelming odds here, there's a hole here. If we go into the hole, we are now in the Ant Mound. Well, it looks like yet another dungeon that's hiding a, a piece of this map. But right now, we're all wounded and we're not really in any shape to go ahead and... Uh, to be... Uh, braving a, a, d a dark dungeon.
We're gonna go ahead and get back on board our ship. And head back west. We're gonna make back for Lord British's castle where we can get our party healed up. Um, regroup before we start going uh, you know, after these map pieces that are located in these dungeons. It looks like we're gonna have to get stronger and we're gonna have to uh, get better equipment before we really uh, are able to tackle these tasks. I mean, it looks like we've reached a, a part of our quest where, uh, where we're gonna have to be facing some pretty uh, fearsome foes and uh, dire situations. A little bit further west, and we should be getting close. We're probably going around the uh, near the town of uh, Cove here. go. There's a piece of a building. I believe we're heading into Brittany Bay here. And the docks should be there. There we go. We're going to head for Lord British's castle for some much needed healing. Oh, that's the museum. We need to go the other way. And hopefully Lord British will be able to uh, assist us a bit. <laughs> ah, but where is the king? Ah, there he is. He's sitting having a little evening snack in his, in his chambers. Trying to figure out how to get Lord British to uh, resurrect uh, Sherry. <laughs> and I believed he would he would resurrect, but I might have been mistaken. We might have to find a different way to bring Sherry back to life. In the meantime, let's go ahead and leave Sherry uh, here in the Avatar's chamber until we can figure out what to do. That leaves us in a bit of a conundrum right now. We have at least uh, one, two, three, four different pieces of this map that we really need uh, in order to continue this, in order to continue this fight, because if just continuing to fight, uh, continuing to attack the um, the shrines, as you can see, is is in and of itself um, an almost impossible job. You know, these gargoyles are tough and hard to beat. Um, 
So we need another avenue forward. This tablet offers at least some way of perhaps finding out what's going on, but it's going to require us to go into four different dungeons at this point. Our party doesn't seem like it's even close to being ready for these types of challenges. So we're going to have to go ahead and get ourselves better equipped and stronger. Get into, you know, get into more battles, get ourselves a little beefed up, leveled up, and get better equipment and better armor. So that's what we're going to do next time. On our next episode, we're getting equipped. I'll see you then.